I wanted to start this video by saying if you're going to plug your Mac Studio or your MacBook Pro or your iPad or even a Windows laptop with USB-C output into the Apple Studio display, you're likely going to have a really wonderful experience of it. It really is a great piece of tech. And I'll be totally honest, I wasn't planning on making a video about this display because I like to be excited about tech. I don't really like being negative. That's not why I started this channel and that's not why I talk about technology in general. But I've actually really struggled with the Apple Studio display and I wanted to talk about that today, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about the biggest issue for me, and that's the single USB-C input on the back of the Apple Studio display. And I knew that going in, I wasn't shocked when I opened it and only saw that. I was well documented and I really did know that that was the case going in. But the problem is my setup has three inputs. If you've seen this channel for a while, you'll know that. It's got a Nintendo Switch, which goes in through HDMI. It has my Mac Studio, which goes in through USB-C, and it has my custom PC, which goes in through DisplayPort. And I had this wonderful idea that I could use my existing USB-C dongle, slap it in the back of the Apple Studio display and get all three of those inputs back again. No problems, no questions asked. And I was actually so confident about that, I didn't do a huge amount of research online. I had a quick Google and it seemed possible. So I thought, yeah, let's go for it. This monitor is going to be a big upgrade over what I've got. I'm going to get really nice colors and I'm gonna get all of my setups back. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Most USB-C dongles, including the one that I have, is more of an output device. It doesn't act as an input device. So you can't put an HDMI into it and then put it into the USB-C on the back because it just doesn't work that way. And that turns out to be the case with pretty much every single one you've heard of. So suddenly I actually only have one input and that's from my Mac Studio and not from anything else. So I thought, that's a shame. There must be some way around this. And there is a way around it. There's a cable which can take your HDMI signal, convert it and then output it as USB-C. So I thought, oh great, I'll get a couple of those and I'm sorted. But unfortunately, those cables only seem to carry visual. They don't carry any audio. So if you do want to connect something to HDMI through that, you're not going to get audio. So you're gonna to have to connect audio up a separate way. And if you're using something like a Switch or a PS5, you can plug it in through the controller or something like that, but it's not ideal. Especially when the Mac Studio speakers are so good, it seemed like I was really missing a trick there. And that was really, really disappointing. In terms of DisplayPort, there was some ways using VR headset cables, which was just a weird rabbit hole to go down. And that seemed to carry a few more things as well which is good but that had its own caveats some of them would only do HD some would only do 4k 30 some would do 4k 60 and the information was just all over the place so the only solution which I kind of came across while using the Mac Studio display over all of this time was to use something like a capture card to run my switch into the capture card and then into the Mac which would then display on the monitor and that would bring audio and everything with it and that seemed like a pretty expensive solution just to be able to play my switch like I once was on my older monitor and the same went for the PC. I actually even spoke to Apple on the phone and over web chat to see if they had any kind of advice on how to get this running and they kind of just led me to my own conclusion that the real answer was no. And they are very helpful and they're very honest like they always are and in fairness to them on Apple's website All of the advertising about the studio display doesn't mention anything other than plugging in a Mac or an iPad It doesn't say this is a great monitor for gaming or this is a great monitor for general purpose It says this is a great monitor for Mac and it truly is for that. It's just not so much for everything else. So I was wrestling with all of those things for the past week or so, and I kind of knew in the back of my mind that maybe this just isn't the right monitor for me, which is such a shame because there were so many good points of this monitor, and there's a huge reason why you might like to go for this thing. One of the main things is the screen quality. You know, OLED aside, this is kind of like the older technology, but it looks absolutely fantastic. That blacks are inky deep, the color is just, a brilliant across the board and video editing and photo editing and things that I do a huge amount, you know, 85 to kind of 90% of the time when I'm sitting here, I'm working and having it for that is absolutely fantastic. Not to mention it's 5K too. And this is probably not something you'll notice unless you're a designer or, you know, a videographer or a video editor or anything like that. But a 5K display over a 4K means the Mac scales correctly. So everything on screen is pin sharp. It's very much like looking at an iPad or a phone where everything is just, you know, that retina sharpness and it just looks fantastic. The other thing you get with a 5K display is more room. Now I was never struggling for room on a 27 inch monitor, especially at 4K, that gives you plenty of space. But having 5K just kind of gives you this like kind of 
a third extra space and you can get loads more windows up on it. You can have more space to edit videos on it and it doesn't look too small either. It just looks kind of perfect and I can totally see why people love 5K because I've really enjoyed using that too. And there's other things as well, like the build quality on this thing is absolutely stunning. I've not had a monitor ever look this good and this is even the VESA mount adapter one. And even though the bezels on it are a little bit bigger than what I'm used to, it just really suited the office and that really means a lot to me. The speakers as well are really excellent. I've got my own pair of speakers on the side and sometimes it was just playing out the monitor and I didn't even notice. I don't have my speakers on particularly loud and having them built into that monitor can save you a lot of desk space too because they're already there. You're obviously also getting a webcam and microphones too. Webcam experience is decent as well. It looks pretty good. It's not incredible. It's not mind blowing, but the fact that it's built in, it's just one less thing you have to worry about. And because of that webcam, it's obviously got microphones too. There was a few times where I picked up a phone call from my iPhone, which just came through to my Mac. And both times I picked up a phone call, both of those people mentioned that I sounded really clear and where am I? And I was like, I'm just sitting in my office talking to my screen, which was like a really nice, it just works feature. Of course, that integration goes a bit further as well with the software controls. It means I can change the brightness on the keyboard. I can change the volume on the keyboard, which are things I didn't have before on my older monitor and I really appreciated those too. And this thing goes really bright. It's almost like double what my old monitor was. If anything, it was a bit too bright. So I usually have it on just over halfway and you know, super bright and just really nice to look at. So with all of those good things added up, I was kind of shocked that I didn't really get on with this monitor. I thought like many Apple products, you kind of got to use it first to understand it. Like using AirPods for the first time, the second you put them in and you listen to the music, you're like, Oh yeah, this is great. That makes a lot of sense. But when I sat down at this monitor for the first time, I was a bit like, oh, it kind of looks like my old monitor and it's not really that different. And even all those extra things like picking up a phone call and you know changing the volume and changing the brightness on the keyboard, really, really useful things. None of them swayed me in the way I thought they would. And I've been using this monitor for over a week now. I actually had to switch back to my old monitor to grab some footage of the Nintendo Switch in my previous video. And when I switched back to my old monitor, I thought, oh no, you know, I'm gonna really notice the difference. And you know, I didn't. It just felt like it wasn't quite as bright and that was kind of it. So yeah, it was just really strange for me to not be swayed by an Apple product, even after using it for a long period of time and switching back and forth between monitors. In the end, it just didn't really convince me like most of Apple's other stuff does. And finally, we can't ignore the price either. This is an inexpensive monitor. It's £1,500 here in the UK. And I know a lot of people will kind of gasp at that and think, oh, you can get so much more for your money. And yes, you totally can, but none of those monitors have 5K. None of those monitors have the incredible industrial design and all of the integration with the keyboard and with a Mac in general. Even with those reasons, which I really appreciate, it eventually just came down to those inputs for me. I wanna be able to play my Switch. I wanna be able to switch to my PC really quickly or to my iPad or to my Mac with the click of a button or with a keyboard shortcut. And a lot of other people will be shouting at the screen like, this is only 60 Hertz, it's not 120 Hertz. And I totally get that too. You know, when I come off my phone, which is 120 Hertz, my iPad screen, which is 120 Hertz, and now my MacBook Pro screen is 120 Hertz, and I come to sit down on my big beefy Mac Studio. It's kind of odd not having that too, and I feel like if I'm going to be spending this much money, I feel like I should be able to switch inputs when I like, have, you know, 120 Hertz if I want it, although I've never been totally swayed by that. It's a nice to have, not an essential for me, but I still feel like I should have that choice and all of those options. So for now, I think I'm going to switch back to my Dell U2720Q, which has got a bunch of inputs. It's a load cheaper and it's just a bit dimmer and at 4K. And I've got to admit, I'm not overly joyed about that. I was really hoping that the Apple Studio display would be kind of the final piece of my office, which brings everything together. You know, I use Apple for pretty much everything I make here on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere else. I was hoping that this monitor would tie the whole ecosystem for me together, but unfortunately it hasn't. Well, at least maybe just not for me. Anyway, that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, pop a like. If you're using an uh, Apple Studio display, let me know in the comments below what you like about it and if you think there's any issues with it. And if you've got any recommendations for other monitors, let me know too, that'd be awesome. And I will see you all in the next one.